First guest tonight, one of the 199 Republican members who defied their leadership and voted no on the debt ceiling. Joining us now, Congressman Louis Gohmert, Republican of Texas, member of the House Judiciary and Natural Resources Committee. Congressman, good to have you with us. 199 Republicans voting against the Speaker's wishes. And what, what, is, the, what is your thinking? What is your motivation? Well, it's rather sad. You, you know, we've talked enough. You know my motivation. My motivation is to try to protect and serve this country that uh, we took uh, to protect and serve. And, and yet, uh, I mean, I don't even know why we call it a debt ceiling anymore if we just raise it any time we get to it. And I, I, and I really have a lot of sympathy, apparently, if you've been speaker before, like uh, Speaker Pelosi, former Speaker Pelosi, your memory gets really uh, uh, troublesome because uh, I was hearing her today talking about how there should never be anything on the debt ceiling increase. It just needs to be automatically increased. The memory's gone there. Apparently, she doesn't recall. But the debt but ceiling we lose was our put in place. May, so Congressman, I, I really need to get to the, to the answer here. 199 Republicans That's voted right. against this. How right. in the world do you expect the Republican Party to not find itself in the same strategic blind and bind that it was in uh, last year when you guys shut down the federal government? There comes well, a time I'm... where there just has to be some pragmatism, go out and win an election Get 400, uh, you know, members. Get uh, 100 senators. Get a presidency. That's right. Well, uh, Lou, I don't expect us not to be in the same bind, and that's why I was so against what we did here. Uh, if there's going to be a debt ceiling increase, we have got to put some things in there that fundamentally make our system better where we don't have to keep doing this. And I argued for that. And, Lou, what it reminded me of it was in 2006 when our former speaker, he was speaker at the time, and our newly elected uh, majority leader, uh, Boehner, told us, you know, we had planned to reform. It's 2006. Yeah. We're going to reform the tax code, all those things we were going to do do all the good things we promised, but there's a tiny chance we might lose the majority in, in November of 06. In 2006, so a Republican president, Congressman. Yes, you sure are not aware you. of the fact that you are a majority in Lou, one listen, branch listen of Listen to me. Listen to the comparison, Lou. In 2006, our leaders told us we were going to get through the year and do nothing. And that is what we're doing now. We're limping through what when we can take a do? stand. You are one majority in the House of Representatives, a democratically You bet led, you we are. You bet you we are. Senate and no bill gets passed on, unless the House you know agrees as well to as it. I do that half of the bills you're passing are pure and I think I may be generous in my percentage, are absolutely uh, uh, political theater because you know they will die in the Senate. You know that a, and a Democratic I president am... will kill them. What do you expect to do when you are in the majority in one branch of government? You're, it, it I seems expect to me that us to do what we took an oath to do. I expect us to stand up, and even on this today, I mean, we could have, if somebody proposed a full audit of the Fed, we should have at least taken the opportunity to say, what do you look, want to know? You Maybe just today, Congressman, you Congressman, just you today, you want to take the apart president. the Federal Reserve at the same time? You are, again, I repeat, you are not in control of the federal government. We are in control. Nobody gets to spend a dime unless the House agrees to it. That is leverage. That is power. And we can use it to save the country. But it's going to take courage. And it's going to take people who recognize... What happened to your courage you last fall when you shut down the government? It we once did once again. not shut it down. Harry Reid shut it down, and now they've gone back. And you will they not have. have but, and would you not agree with me, Congressman? And I respect you mightily. But would you not agree with me that there can be no end to the same maneuver other than the end you experienced at the hands of the Democratic leadership, and some would say the Republican minority leadership in the Senate. The things that have gone on, the Obamacare has continued, as you pointed out, 
35 times he has continued to change the law. It's time to postpone this for rank-and-file Americans across the, the, the full country, but, not just businesses that were willing to lie and Congress cater to them and the sign the proper statement. And we could stand for the American people, and eventually, despite the mainstream press, eventually people will see when we stand up for Americans. That's what you do. Whether it's, it's popular or not, you stand Stand up for America, and eventually people do notice. And I, I don't think believe the American people, Congressman, in all due respect, can draw the same causal relationship that you do from a government shutdown to the benefit of working men and women and the middle class of this country. You failed to con make such a connection in 1996. You failed to do so last fall. I wasn't here and in 96. I understand when I say you, I'm referring 96, to the Republican they Party. They reformed the welfare represent. in 1996, and they fundamentally yeah. changed and made lives better for right. single moms whose income went up. We could take the same stand. They got beat up. We will get beat up. But if you do Congress what's me? right, eventually it's going to be politically popular because eventually people yeah. will see when you do what's right. That's all I'm advocating, yeah. Lou. Stand up and do what's right for the country and we didn't do it today congressman lloyd gomert always good to talk with you thanks good so much. to talk to you Lou.